Welcome back to the channel, and in today's video we're going to be talking about 9 times Storage Wars struck massive luck. And if you're a fan of Film Trip, make sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when we release our daily videos. Now with all that being said, let's get right into the video. Number 1. Pirate Treasure at the Bottom of the Storage Unit this lucky buyer bought two units, one for $600 and one for $1,100. They belong to the same folks. I understand that uh, the folks that owned it, um, the person had died. Normally, treasure chests are found at the bottom of the ocean in fairy tales, but for this lucky bidder, he struck gold. Literally. As unreal as it sounds, there were even news reports on the subject and how insane the finding was. Dan and Laura Dotson were interviewed about the unit on Fox News, discussing the finding. While the bidder would remain anonymous for obvious personal reasons, they found the very valuable gold coins in the most unsuspecting place. The coins were placed inside a blue Rubbermaid tote, normally used to store household items such as toys or clothing. With this wonderful find, the anonymous bidder only spent $600 and $1,100 on two units the day he would come across the coins. In the end, the bidder walked away with a whopping $500,000 to his name. Funnily enough, it took three people to move the tote. With how much those coins added up to, it's unsurprising that the rubber tote would be so heavy. Even more surprising that it didn't break. It didn't make the show, but it does happen. And he was a newbie, so I think that all of our longtime buyers are pretty upset. They just didn't well. go head to head and bid against him. Number two, Frank A. Gutierrez Art Hall. Look at this piece of art here. Thanks, funny looking. It's a lady's face. In a window. Uh-huh. I want to see what this is. See if there's any artwork. In Season 3 of Storage Wars, Darnell the Gambler took a punt on a locker for the princely sum of $3,600. Quite a bit more than your average bid. The gamble paid off big time when it was discovered that Darnell had just put in the winning bid on a chamber filled with original art by Frank Gutierrez. The drawings, paintings, and decorated objects were estimated by an expert as having a total value of somewhere near $300,000, making Darnell's the most successful buy on the show to date. Now that sort of find could make anyone an art enthusiast. Being a gambler isn't just about winning. It's not? Have you not been listening to anything I say? Not really. Number 3. The Safe it's gonna be good. No, they're all light. They're only a couple hundred pounds a piece. Oh my God. Uh, that's what we needed. One more guy in a shirt that's too small for him. What's up, Daryl? From fifty dollars to one hundred thousand, any amount of cash can help. And when you're trying to gain your money back from a recent storage unit purchase, it can mean the world. However, this time it was completely different. When Dan and Laura sold one of their many storage units that day for only five hundred dollars. They hadn't realized they would practically be giving away $7.2 million. Upon this news, the owner of the storage unit was greatly concerned, wanting the unit back as he had apparently forgotten about it. They approached the new owner of it with an attorney trying to strike a deal of $600,000 for the return of the unit. After some negotiations, they reached a deal of $1.2 million for a return on the investment. If anything, this was a huge steal. No doubt the bidders felt a bit of that pain for returning their treasure. Open! <laughs> oh, the, uh, empty. Shut up. <laughs> Woo! Number four, Renee's museum find. Here, hold this for a second. Wow, look at how intricate this is. 150 for this one, 500 for that one. <gasps> Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. When you're looking through storage units, finding useless things are often very common as most units are used to store old household items. But when Renee scored this unit, he finds tens of thousands of dollars worth of kitchenware, museum collectibles, and even a grandfather clock. Most of the items range from Chinese artifacts to pure silver dining table sets. He quickly names prices for each item and as he goes through each finding, the price starts to go into the thousands. Near the end of it all, Renee estimates that the grand total for his new haul earned him about $50,000. He must have felt like a kid in a candy store pointing out those items. We're like sitting in a pile of cash right now. Unbelievable. By the time we price everything and do our research, I'm telling you right now, we're gonna make $50,000 in this locker. Number five, 
Beach Boys Archive. A trove of Beach Boys memorabilia is now up for grabs after it was found in a South Florida locker. Back in the late 2000s, a Floridian USA radio station decided to play the Storage Wars game themselves, purchasing the contents of a locker at a blind auction for something like $300. When the storage unit had originally been rented in the 1970s, the owner had kept up with payments until 2006 when they had stopped paying. Little did they know the contents of the unit would hold some of the most valuable memorabilia of the century. They had originally been written off as documents and papers, but when searched through turned out to be photographs, handwritten lyric sheets, musical arrangements, contracts, and even royalty checks belonging to the 60s superstars, the Beach Boys. After an eight-year court battle with the remaining members of the Beach Boys trying to reclaim ownership of the material, the incredible archive was eventually sold via a sealed bid auction for an undisclosed sum. It's estimated that the sum rounded up to or above six million pounds. Guess finders keepers doesn't always roll out perfectly. Well, the Beach Boys treasure trove is actually being sold as an entire collection. And get this, bids are expected to fetch at least six million dollars. That is number six, the number one find. It is one of the rarest of all comic books, Action Comics number one, where Superman makes his first appearance. It was ten cents back in 1938. Now it's worth more than. And in 2011, a near mint condition copy of Action Comics number one was found by the winner of a California storage auction. The comic book went on sale on the comic collector site. ComicConnect.com for over two million dollars. Bizarrely, the comic's former owner was none other than Hollywood legend Nicolas Cage, who, having purchased it for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in 1997, reported it stolen in the year 2000. Coincidence or not, it wouldn't be surprising if he was at least a little bitter. Nicholas Cage's insurance company paid him when this comic book was stolen 10 years ago, so it now belongs to the insurance company, and no one is sure who's going to own it when all of this is over. Number 7, 1956 Ford Thunderbird. It was owned by the icon from 1955 to 1962 and was a favorite of hers. It's estimated that the two... When you're buying a storage unit, you can only hope for the best deal. Oftentimes, though, you can find junk and even some valuable items here and there. But for this bidder, they found more than they could have ever dreamed of. A 1956 Ford Thunderbird. A find that would baffle the buyer and would bring him about $300,000 richer. It was an extraordinary find that one would never forget. Hold on to that fixer-upper long enough and maybe you'll reach a similar fate. According to a report, Monroe and playwright Arthur Miller drove the Thunderbird to their civil marriage ceremony, and she later gave the car. Number eight, Elvis Presley newspapers in mint condition. Most of the things that appeared in the newspaper were sensationalized and, and to this large number of drugs, not taken into account. The infamous Dave Hester is well known on the show for being incredibly lucky with his storage finds often paying a small price for a storage unit well worth the amount paid for. Oftentimes, Dave Hester ranks up the prices, earning himself hate from many cast members on the show. In the first season, the cast had been presented with a storage unit full of old newspapers, and while it initially wasn't a hopeful find, Dave Hester thought otherwise. He made a $750 bid on the hopeful storage unit, finding himself with a pile of what seemed to be just stacks of newspapers with wrapping over them. Stacks of mint condition Elvis Presley newspapers dating to the day of his death filled in the storage unit. Dave Hester was amazed by the find, and when he had them appraised, they were worth about $90,000. He really scored big for only putting $750 on the table, and most likely gave a big thank you very much to good old Elvis for the good luck. Number nine, one vending machine after another. Come on, Memo. We ain't got all day. All right, 
It's good. Let's get this done. Wake me up when this stuff's ready to go. My trucks are back with the three lockers I got for 60. Another big fine for Hester came when he employed his acting skills to discourage anyone else from bidding on a unit he felt good about. A cursory glance revealed that the locker was filled with old, broken vending machines. But Hester spotted brand new ones in the back. He ranted about how worthless the unit was until other buyers lost interest. Using his acting skill to throw others off their game, he managed to snag up the unit for $1,300 and sold the new machines for a nearly $28,000 profit. Now that could get you a lot of soda pop. And now we got the electronics. I mean, there's some cool old stuff in here. This is a pretty cool reel-to-reel uh, -reel Pioneer. 500 bucks is what these are going for. And all Hey, nice to see that you made it to the end. Be sure to leave a comment, we love to hear from you. It would also do us a huge favor if you like and subscribe to the channel as well, along with turning on our notifications so you can get the heads up every time a new video is posted. From all of us here at Film Trip, have a lovely day.